Hi and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will look at the Neomark 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery. And the reason why you see my face or my head like this, so you can imagine how big this battery bank is. It's not a bank, this battery. Before we start with the capacity test and tearing down the battery and then taking a closer look on the inside, I wanna talk about briefly about this battery because this battery was sent to me about four to five months back. And this battery has been used since then for the capacity tests, discharging and charging all the time with all the batteries you've seen on my channel so far. Battery has a little, you know, wear and tear maybe. Um, I was using it as I mentioned. So keep that in mind when you do the capacity test. It might not pull full capacity anymore, but gives you also a good indication of what it means after four to five months of use, um, this battery. But it's, as mentioned, it's for capacity tests. So charging full, discharging, maybe sometimes completely full, which is not recommended always, but the more you do it, the more likely it is that this battery is having a little shorter lifespan. So keep that in mind. So this battery is pretty big compared to one of this other videos, this 24 volt battery, 100 amp hour, pretty much the same, but it has a different form factor. So in, cause in terms of dimensions, those are the dimensions and also the weight. And to compare it with the other battery, this battery is wider compared to the 24 volt battery, which is quite interesting. So there's quite a lot of development happening in, happening in the meantime. And when we open it up, I'm really curious if there's maybe, you know, on the sides, if we can see there's some foam or whatever, which is just preventing it from being small. But as of now, it's been a great battery for me. It's a heavy battery. So that's why I was using it uh, quite a lot on in my studio. Let's just get started with uh, more insights on this battery and then we'll do the capacity test. So this battery comes with the typical terminals. It's red marked for positive. It has also a plus and the negative back here uh, also has this epoxy and it's marked black. There's also the negative symbol. And it does come with, uh, I believe also M8 bolts. I think it's 13 millimeter. And so far, no issues. They're located here on the side. It does have those nylon straps and handles so you can carry it and you have to carry it. It's quite heavy. The housing itself um, seems to be plastic, has a lot of other batteries as well. So here's the brand again, Nermark. Have not heard about it before, but it is made in China as it labels here. We do see the basic information about the battery right here. It's a model 12200, 12 12.8 volt nominal, 200 amp hours, gives us 2560 watt hours. And then when you go over here, whoop, we can see there are some recycle CE, doing it throw away um, symbols as well, made in China. And that's, there's not more to it. It tells you also uh, doing a store above 60 degrees Celsius and stuff like that. But what's really interesting, it does come with a little manual. And this manual is this one, so you can see it's a very small one. Um, I do have other batteries from the same brand. Uh, they have the same manual because they cover just, you know, a couple of different batteries. So you can see here is a very short outline. We can see different models and we have to go, let's see, where is it? Up, oh, not on this side. It's here on this side. I believe it should be this battery below here. So this information on the bottom and it tells us the charge voltage, charging current and max charge current is 100 amp hour and the max continuous current is it says just max continuous current, 100 amp. I don't know if it means max continuous discharge current or charge current, something I don't know. Max pulse current, they call it. It's for less than three seconds, up to 200 amp. They stayed in here. So, and then we have some storage information and operating temperature here as well. Charging temperature, discharge temperature. As much as I'm aware of, there's nothing labeled with a low or high temp cutoff. So, when you open it up, we'll figure that out. But first, that's all about this battery. Really quick, uh, if you're interested in one of those batteries, of course, there's always a link in the description below. We'll do the capacity test now. So let's switch over to that. All right, onto the capacity test. Here we can see it. We have the typical setup. Here is the Nermark battery back there. And here we have the shunt. So we can see right now the resting tear voltage of 13.69 volts. I just unplugged the charger again, just to make sure it's topped up all the way, maximum possible. And we try to achieve a point to C. So let's see if we can get it with a 200 amp hour um, lithium ion phosphate battery. Uh, it is around 40 amps. So let's start and let's kick it in. Oh, 
All right, it's ramping up and it is definitely over the 40 amps. That's yeah, fine for me. So we'll let it run. We'll see how far we can get. And we'll go from there. Okay, look at those numbers. 197. And we are below 10 volts already, so we should shut off the battery pretty soon. I did switch indeed. Oh, it does its job automatically. Let me turn this off. And I did indeed change to a smaller power supply to pull the power out. Um, so you might be able to squeeze a little bit more out. Now it's going back up. So I think still after, as I mentioned, I use the battery quite a lot for charge and discharge already. It's impressive, still having 197.5 amp hours, probably a little bit more if it would, would have done maybe a less intense um, point, what is it, 3C test. But this is pretty good, pretty nice. I like that, I like to see that. I think now it's time to move on and uh, take the battery apart to see what's in it and to understand how the build quality is. Sadly, it did not pass, in quotes, because it's a used battery. So I think for a used battery, it might not be too bad. Especially a battery which was a couple times depleted to 100%, or oh, sorry, to 0%. So I think it's not too bad, actually. I could have imagined it could have been worse, but um, I think it's, you know, within limits at the moment. So keep that with a grain of salt. It was not new when we tested this capacity right now. And I did not do a capacity test at the beginning. Sorry about that, but um, sometimes I just like to have those real life tests. Next, we'll take it apart and see what's inside. So for me it takes a little bit, but I hope for you it's a matter of seconds. All right, there we have the battery right now. This is the bottom. I put it in this orientation on purpose. Here's the top, still connected with the terminal. And terminal wires um, are two of them. And they have a little label. They don't call out the size of the wire actually, so something I cannot see. Uh, here we have a, an epoxy board and then underneath. So one thing I want to point out immediately, there's a lot of glue, a lot of glue blobs everywhere. This one's protect to the side and quite interesting. I can see already um, those are eight cells, prismatic cells. And they are from Highstar, 100 amp hour each cell. So you can see the configuration is that one pair, it's been pair, oh, sorry. Two prismatic cells are paired up in parallel to 200 amp hour. And then here it is connected in series. So we're ending up with 12 volt nominal capacity. And then we have those 200 amp hours. So those are copper bus bars, it looks like. They're a little on the thinner side, which I'm surprised. But don't know, laser welded here, it looks like. Here they double laser welded. I don't know why. I would assume that it didn't hold in probably. We have a bunch of solder blobs everywhere, especially for the balance leads. One thing which I think is a little dangerous and I don't like as much is back here. I don't know if you can see that, but the copper is just, you know, the copper stranded, stranded wires are just popping out here. So it's protected in quotes by a lot of glue. You can see it's just spread all over and this epoxy board but it is definitely on the more dangerous side, in my opinion, um, to have that like this. Here you have a little closer look on the bus bars, and the balance leads and everything else. They're just holding place here with the clue. So I wanna keep this. And what I think and always find very interesting. So you have to imagine that's where the lid is, or yeah, the lid, the cover, and there's plenty of space so that's what I meant, there's plenty of space. Also, it can move around a little bit. I think it's it was not touching anything uh, on the lid here at all, which is good, right? But you also don't wanna move it around the whole time. So it's something, you know, it's a little controversial in my opinion. And here we see on this side, there's a lot of, this is a plastic mount or whatever, just a plastic. And it looks like it's just holding in place. It might be just glue. I wanna try to get it off in a second, um, but this is just, holding in place everything. Here, hopefully you get a better view. It's holding everything in place. 
that it's not moving lateral. There's still movement possible up and down a little bit, I feel like. Even though they have a lot of glue, um, it, I didn't feel anything shaking around. That, I want to I want to clarify that. Uh, but I, I still think, and due to the weight, it will not move around probably as well. Still would be nice to see that, you know, using the space. Or what I would love to see, just use smaller um, plastic housings. That would be amazing, because now we have that. Maybe at that time they didn't, but now we have it. Uh, moving on, I would say, over here to our correct to our BMS. Um, you can see this BMS is held in place by, I'm not sure it looks like, be careful. there's some packing tape and a lot of glue over here. Here we go. Um, here we can also see it's held in place also with, here's a blob, there's a blob there, there, there. And it's glued to the epoxy board. Epoxy board is hold, held in place here all around with a lot of glue and here we have the battery, uh, those two wires, the black one negative, go to the main negative and those two on the other side go to the main terminal. And I don't see any name or label on here yet, unfortunately. So I don't know what kind of BMS we're dealing with here. But we can see everything is kind of hold in place with some kind of clue or uh, yeah, something else. And the rubber gasket, in quotes, gasket is I would say well, look at this rubber gasket is more like this um, it feels like it's just black glue or silicon which was used put into the seam and that's what hold it in place so I was able to um, break it open it was not too difficult luckily um, I always like that for me my purpose for purposes of uh, when it's not meant to open up at all um, this was not strong enough, but um, thanks that it was not strong enough. But as mentioned, I used it and uh, was, it was standing the battery without any issues whatsoever at all. Okay, one more thing we have over here, back in, let me see, there we go, here, back there. We might have some kind of sensor and I wanna see if I can get there. Um, one last word about those solder blobs. I like to call them like that. They seem to be good and tight or not. Um, it looks to me like that the wire, silicon wire is also a little bit heated up when they do, did that. They look solid, no doubt on that. Um, but we have seen better construction, to be honest. No lux here whatsoever, that's fine if you don't want to use that. But yeah, I'm not a fan of um, solid joints anymore because it's really, when it gets too hot at one point, it's possible that it just, melt over time or when you know when you put this battery in a camper van it might also be not the best use case for this type of battery when how it's built together and hold together it might hold you know maybe a year or two or something but the more you go off-roading with your car or whatever might cause some issues over time and then just get loose maybe um when it's too hot constantly stuff like that uh yeah let's try to move on and see if I can get an access here on this side to the sensor. Okay, I got some access over here. Looks like a hot temperature cutoff switch uh, up to 75 Celsius it's labeled. So I'll do that test. I don't see anything else, sadly. There's no low time cutoff, I'm pretty sure. So we'll do that test and see if it works. Okay, I got my setup. So you can see here to the left, the bench power supply. Charging with uh, 10 amp more. And now I'm using the heat gun to heat this up. So pay attention to this one, what's happening. And it did trip already. You can see it, it stopped. Now we have just to wait. My hand is colder than uh, the switch at the moment, so. And there we are back up. So the high temp cutoff does work. That's, I would say not a surprise. That's great, it's kind of good standard in the meantime. I like to see that. Okay, I wanna give you an idea. Um, compared to the housing, when we don't take this part here on this slide, by the way, this is exact same plastic. It's missing here on the other side because it's in, still in the box. I didn't take it out, but it means 
it does add another, what is it, almost, yeah, a little bit less than three inches over here to that side. When we just measure the battery pack, which is this part, just here and over here in the width, I'm curious where we're ending up. So in width, let's be generous, nine inches. And here we have, also let's be super generous, 14 inches. And in terms of height, we do have 5.5. So that's, that could be the complete housing for this unit. Oh, actually, I have to be a little bit more, sorry. Let's give it six. Let's give it six in height. But that could be the complete housing for this battery pack, which is 200 amp hours. It's massive. I think this was this housing, which was selected, you know, when you want to save money, when you just take uh, off the shelf any, just any of those um, housings, or whatever cases, totally fine. But when you think about space and everything else, you can do a lot more. Definitely, you can do way more. So, so let's see a few other things I didn't point out yet. So I did not point out that epoxy board is between each cell. Still something which I think is nice in terms of separating, but epoxy board doesn't really give or take when um, the cell is bulging. It's or when it's you know just contract more uh, some kind of high density form or whatever you want to call it that would be way nicer to see I would say because this is it's kind of insulating ish but on the other hand not because they connected so it's kind of I don't know why they put it in between it's to protect I guess just the cells from each other touching Seeing that much glue here on top just threw on, seeing those strands here, I wish the build quality would be a little bit better. And I'm wondering, really, I'm really wondering about those bus bars. They're pretty thin. I'm, I'm really surprised with that. But even if you, you know, even if you look like this, when it's standing up, it would cut off here. That's a nice pack. 200 ammo and this, this form factor? Dude, that would be nice. I would love to see that. I think I will try to find a new housing for this one. I'm really curious if I can buy off the shelf housing as well and just put it back in. I'm really curious about that because um, having those cells, I put a cell in for, uh, here's a picture in again. At least that's what it's labeled on here. So there's not more to this one. It's a pretty simple battery. So far, as I mentioned, it was working well for me. But when I look in the inside, it's, yeah. I'm wondering if I should keep using this one, especially when I look at this sort of strain here. Especially when I look at this, uh, this sort of blob here. Yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about this. I'm really curious. Yeah, I'm really curious what you think about this. Um, just, you know, subtract, take off those clue blobs. But what do you think about something like this back here? Let me try to get this in focus it a little bit better again. Get it into a good job here. Yeah, let me know what you think about this. All right, you've seen the battery. Safety goggles. You've seen a battery, you've seen what it looks inside, you have seen after using it for four to five months how the capacity still is. I would love to know what you think about this. Would you go with such a battery price-wise? Um, I try to put a picture in here as well just to get an understanding. I'll try to figure out if I can find another housing. Uh, what I always wanted to do actually is putting a more or different suitable um, BMS in and then putting it in a different housing. Maybe I will fabricate something myself or we'll maybe find something off the shelf which you can just purchase and throw in those cells. So if you know something, please leave some, please leave some comments and let me know about that stuff. Maybe that's another follow-up project I can do on this battery because I uh, would be bummer to not use it as always because I, I love to reuse that stuff. Yeah, let me, know, let me know what you think about it. Subscribe to the channel if you like that stuff, what, you, what I'm doing, or if you want me to do other things, leave also some comments. Thanks for watching. Cheers.